Hi, good morning. My name is Tim Armstrong. I work with PyUp Language Software Group based at PyUp University in Thailand. And today I'd like to give you a short introduction to the help provider I've been working on over the last little bit. Um, the idea behind the help provider is that it enables documenters to link help files to WinForms controls for a given app without having to touch the source code. Um, my code is um, just further development based on um, the work done by uh, Victor Zichla, uh, along with a couple of improvements that I hope you'll find useful. Uh, the original idea was by Tom Clement over on Code Project. Uh, Victor took his work and uh, expanded on it, and then I'm just building on Victor's. I've taken a couple ideas also from Gerrit von Horik. One of them is localizing the UI into English, as uh, Victor is Polish. Um, and also uh, adding the ability to work with multiple help files. Uh, another addition that I've made to um, the work done by Victor is adding um, the graphics overlay, which I also got from um, the code project. I, I found that it really helped me navigate uh, between the controls and know exactly what I'm working with. So uh, giving credit where credit's due, now uh, we'll jump into business, and I'd like to give you a short example of what the help provider can do. In order to use the help provider with a given application, the developers of that application have to have integrated the help provider uh, into the source. Um, that's not hard, but that's not the fo focus of this tutorial. This tutorial is for documenters and to explain how to use the help provider in a help provider enabled application. Uh, the first thing that a documenter has to do in order to um, be able to access the help provider UI is to start the application with the help builder flag. Um, the reason it was done this way is so that uh, so that uh, your regular user can't accidentally um, start messing with the help files. So you have to explicitly tell the application that you are going to be adding help files. So here you can see that we're going to start the We Say app um, with uh, the ability to add help. So let's hit enter and bring up the We Say UI. All right. As you can tell, the We Say UI is fairly simple. Uh, we have a tab control up here and then a couple of buttons on the intro screen. And in order to link help topics to the various controls here, we, uh, we will hit Control F1, and that'll bring up the help editor. Uh, I'd like to talk about the various components that make up this help editor, uh, the help provider UI. Um, the first and most interesting is uh, probably the form hierarchy right here. The form hierarchy shows the um, the controls, uh, the control hierarchy um, for the control that was focused when we hit Control F1. In our case, that was this semantic domain control, uh, the semantic domains button. You can tell as that when I click on a control in the form hierarchy window that that control is highlighted over in the We Say window over here. So that really helps you navigate and know exactly what you're assigning help to. So in our case, we're going to select the We Say app form. That's the topmost control. And we're going to add a very general help topic to that. So here's the We Say help file, We Say C help CHM. Um, and we're going to add the We Say program overview um, help topic uh, to that tabbed form. So to do that, um, we select um, the We Say help file down here rather than the chorus help file. And then in the category, we enter the URL, which is we say program, we say overview HTM. All right, so now we save that to disk. And now, uh, back in the we say program, if I, if I hit F1, boom, it brings up the we say program overview, immediate feedback. How snazzy is that? Chances are, though, when the user hit F1, he was actually not hoping for an overview of the we say program. He was actually looking for help specifically for this home page, for the dashboard here. Um, so to give him what he wants, let's hit Control F1 again, and uh, we see the help provider UI with the same control hierarchy that we saw before because we still had the semantic domains button focused when we hit Control F1. Now you'll notice that the We Say app tab form is black because it already has a help topic assigned to it, uh, while the other forms in the hierarchy are all still red, which means they don't have a help topic assigned to them. So uh, in our case, we, what we want is we want to assign uh, a help topic to the dashboard. So uh, we'll go ahead and take a look in the help file and see what we've got. Oh, and looky there, we have a home tab help topic. I happen to know that the URL to that topic is concepts home tab. Now we'll save that out. 
And now when the user on the uh, home page hits F1, it brings up the home tab. So that's pretty cool. All right, so uh, what's the advantage of this whole hierarchy thingy and why does it work the way it does? Um, what's happening when we uh, assign um, help tasks throughout the control hierarchy is that when F1 is pressed, the help provider walks the control tree um, and looks for the most specific help that it can find. So in our case, it starts at the dash at the semantic domains button. Um, there's no help file there. Goes up to the panel again. No no help topic, and finally reaches the dash where it finds a help topic concepts homepage, and that's the one uh, home tab, and that's where it sh uh, that's the topic that it shows in preference to the more general we say overview home t uh, help topic. Now interestingly, if we jump over to the dictionary browse and uh, browse and edit topic. Um, and let's click down here in the in the word uh, word text box, and we hit Control F1. We see, of course, a completely different control hierarchy because the UI looks completely different. Uh, it starts down with the um, with the text box and works its way all works its way all the way up to the um, we say app tabbed form again, which is identical to the tabbed form that we uh, that we were working with when we were over on the home button the actual form that makes up the we say application and there we have again the we say overview help topic so interestingly though we've not assigned any help on the dictionary browse and edit side if we hit f1 we see the we say program overview it's getting that from the we say uh, the we say application form itself so that's pretty cool so uh, by setting one on the by setting a help topic on the topmost form of an application you really get help for almost the entire uh, for almost every other control in the app all right, so now we've covered the basics of the help provider, and uh, now I'd like to talk about some of the finer points of assigning help to certain types of controls. Um, so we've seen that when the semantic domain button is highlighted and we hit F1, we get help for the home tab. All right, so far so good. But now if the user actually clicks on the home tab itself and hits F1, we get the We Say Program Overview. Why is that? Well, let's hit Control F1 and look at our control hierarchy, and we'll see that the hierarchy ends after the tab control. It never makes it down to the dash control, which is where we assign the help. Uh, and that makes sense because the thing that had focus when we hit F1 is the actual tab control. All right, so that's an easy enough fix. Let's uh, bring up the tab control with the semantic domain button highlighted. Go to the dash control. Cut and paste the topic up into the tab control, hit save, select the home tab, hit F1, boom, we get the home tab. All right, great, everything's hunky-dory, we think. All right, but now if we go to the dictionary, browse, and edit, select text box, hit F1, we get help for the home tab. And if we look at the control hierarchy, that makes sense because that tab control the actual tab control here is uh, part of the control hierarchy for dictionary browse and edit as well. All right, so what do we do? We want the user to be able to see help for home even when they've got the home tab selected, um, but we don't want them to see help for home when they've got the dictionary browse and edit tab selected. Uh, the problem here is with particular controls like the tab control um, that change their change uh, what they look like based on the data they contain. So in the case of a tab control, the tab control itself is the same, but the individual tabs might look different depending on um, on what the developers intended. That's uh, where this context box over here comes in. So in the case of the tab control, what we want is uh, for individual tabs to have specific help tasks. So while we have the dictionary browse and edit control highlighted, we will hit add and you'll see that it, uh, it adds the dictionary browse and edit um, label to the context. It gets that from this, um, this control name here. And we want to assign a new help task to that. Uh, so let's bring up the we say help and see what we've got. Uh, surprise, surprise, we have a dictionary browse and edit help task under we say program describe dictionary browse and edit. So let's grab that URL and add it to the dictionary browse and edit context. We'll hit save. And now if we hit F1, it brings up the dictionary browse and edit uh, help. For home, we click on the home tab, brings up home help, dictionary browse and edit, dictionary browse and edit. What does semantic domains do? Let's click on that. Oh, it still brings up the home tab. 
So we'll need to add a uh, we'll need to add another help topic for that as well. So let's select the tab control, add another context, select that context, add help for the semantic domains, and save that out. Now let's hit F1. Gather words by semantic domain. Great. If we click down in the text box, still gather words by semantic domain. All right, great. So now everything seems to be working. But what would happen if we got um, yet another uh, got yet another tab in here? It would show the home page. So a better solution than what we have right now uh, is to remove the help topic. Actually, what I'll do is I'll make a copy of this help topic down onto the tab control. I will add another context, home. We'll grab the home help page and save. All right, so F1, good. F1, good. F1, good. All right, so everything is looking good. All right, so just to give you a heads up that some controls may not behave entirely the way you expect, and hopefully the, uh, the contacts context can help you on. Um, right now it works for tree views and it works for tab views. Uh, anything else and we'd have to uh, add that functionality to the help provider. Another topic I'd like to touch on is the use of multiple help files. To do that we're going to bring up the send receive dialog box. Uh, the interesting thing about this dialog box is that uh, it's actually part of a library that's embedded inside of WeSay. Uh, that library comes with its own help file um, called Chorus and uh, if we hit control F1, we can see down here in the, uh, in the help files that that's one of our options, is that co uh, chorus help file. So when we're linking UI that com came with a particular library, we're probably going to have more luck finding help topics in the help file um, that came with that library, in this case, the chorus help file. Now, uh, an interestingly, if you look up here at the control hierarchy, you'll see that it's very different than when we were in the WeSay main window. And that makes sense because we're now in a dialog box uh, window. And so the topmost form is no longer the WeSay tab form. Instead, it's the chorus sync dialog. Uh, we also see that the developers um, gave us uh, a help topic that was already linked um, to the chorus help file. Um, so let's go ahead and make sure that works. Close there, hit F1. Sure enough, brings up the chorus help file. That's nice. All right, of course we could override that behavior by making more specific uh, help files and uh, help topics that are linked to the chorus help file or the we say help file for that matter. Um, but what I want to point out here is that you can actually choose to override the settings that, um, that the developers shipped with, uh, with their application. Either you could change the, top, uh, change the topic that it shows in the chorus help file, or you could change it to, um, to be something out of the we say help file, say the get more help dialog from we say. So let's save that over here, hit F1, and sure enough, it, link, it brings up the get more help topic in the we say help file, and you can click on the link, which should take you to um, the Palazzo, uh, Palazzo website in your browser. browser. All right, so that's uh, just to show you that you can actually link to multiple help files, provided the developers um, intended that. And uh, that way you can uh, make a complex web of um, controls to different help files and hopefully um, get your users the help that they need. All right, now that we've uh, linked all of these help topics to the various controls throughout our application, the question is, how do we get that information to the users? Um, to that end, the help provider writes out the link uh, writes out the links between controls and help files um, to a directory contained in documents, help maps. There's a help map for each help file that, uh, that was edited, or um, actually that you can edit in, your, uh, in the application. Um, so the we say help map contains all the links from controls that map to the we say help file, and the chorus help map contains all the links that map from the uh, any controls to the chorus help file. Uh, the developers need these two files to uh, integrate them into their application and then and into their installer so that in the end it can end up on the user's machine. How exactly you get those help files, uh, these help maps, back to the developers is really between you and them, um, whether you email them in or whether you have some other system in place. 
In our case, uh, we use Mercurial um, for almost everything that we do. And so, for example, um, if I wanted to uh, tell, if I wanted to get the new links um, into the next version of WeSay, I could grab this WeSay help map, copy it, go to whatever, wherever my um, WeSay documentation repository is. In my case, it's in WeSay doc. Just paste that in there. Bring up that handy dandy Mercurial uh, UI, and we'll see that here's the new help map showing us exactly what's changed from one version to the next. I could check that in, push it upstream, and it would be integrated into the next version of WeSafe. But again, every application um, will have, uh, every development team, I should say, will have a different, uh, a different way for the documenter to get those files to them. All right, so I hope this, uh, this was helpful to you. I hope you uh, enjoy the power that this, uh, this help provider brings to you. I really appreciate, again, the work done by uh, Victor and Tom um, when it comes to, came to conceiving this idea of the help provider, and uh, we look forward to making it available to our documenters and users. All right, have a great day.